Pat McGard is laughing at a secret joke he and I are sharing. And it's yes. a financial joke, so it's got to do with high finance, so I, we'll, we'll keep it under wraps. Good morning to all our listeners and all our viewers today. We are going to have a brief but absolutely beautiful um, podcast today because we're rushing to do even more important things after this. Um, how are you this morning, Pat? You well? Granted, I was, I was in the, the occupied territory of Londonderry this morning and, you know, <laughs> Derry was looking really good. good. I, I, by the way, just uh, I'm here d uh, speaking as a Dunning Allman. Is there a more beautiful city in Ireland than Derry? I guess I've always had a very soft spot for Derry. I suppose uh, uh, that's because when there's borders and columns, I used to get out to the dentist and things and got that sense of freedom down the streets and uh, uh, get up Shipkey Street and uh, get up on the walls to have a smoke. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, know that, I, I think the foil, you know, uh, dissects Derry and it's the most beautiful. It's a majestic river. Absolutely. It is. It is. Yeah. I used to get homesick looking up uh, where it flowed from, from up towards uh, Stramon. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I was thinking, beyond that, it's all one nice. Uh, beyond that, it's all that. Uh, it is a lovely city. Okay, let's move to um, yesterday's major sporting event, the All Ireland Football Final, which was won, of course, by the county boys from the county Armagh. Armagh. Did you watch it, Pat? Yeah, I was I was in Derry and um, I was in the Templemore Sports Club and I watched it there. And Did I was driving it? out, Jude, and I was I was listening to it uh, in the car, and I, I actually reached home and I, I couldn't get out of the car because I said if I get out of the car, if you turn on the TV, I'll miss it. And I sat the last 10 minutes. It was the most exciting. I just, I quite literally, and I mean it, I couldn't get out of the car because I, I said, if I get out of the car, I'm going to miss this. Yeah, so I sat yeah. on, the, on, the car, on the car until it was over. Uh, well, that's one of the tests they say. If, if it's a sting in the car moment, then whatever's yeah. on the radio it has to be very good. Yeah. Uh, I watched the whole thing on TV and I I have no affiliation with our ma. No, uh, other than right. as in Ulster County, although I'd be watch, I think you have to watch that kind of thing. And next thing you'd be thinking partitionist. But I thought it was a great spectacle. Eighty two thousand yeah. people packed in there, mm. and I'm sure more people would have been in if they could have got the tickets. Um, yeah. The 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 fact that um, the president of the GA is Jareth Burns and his son Charlie Charlie Oog, as they call him, uh, yeah. was playing, and the way they embraced and. Um, Everything about it. And that last block by that guy uh, blocked the ball when it might have gone into the net or over, over exactly. the bar even. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's an example of how everything in a, a Gaelic team or a football team, I suppose, counts even just the, the blocking of a shot, let alone scoring a goal or a point. And the goal was terrific. I loved it. I loved uh, it. I just thought it was you, you know some of yeah, I, I felt I really was delighted for Kieran McGinney. I have read some oh, yeah. of that, that that Armagh were chokers and all the rest. But you, they lost two Ulster finals, I think, on penalties. They uh, they were beaten on, on I think on a some uh, last minute of, of a point a couple of years back, and for you know and they have had their ups and downs. But yesterday, uh, no, the stars definitely aligned for Armagh. Yes, Jarlath uh, Burns, the president, a son uh, came on, played well. Um, you know, McGainy getting uh, the whatever, as you say, the block in the last minute by that young fella. It was that was by the way, Jude. I think that was the key moment of the game. It was. Said, oh, I think there was a guy blocking the pal. Uh, the, For sure. If, if Derry or if Galway had got that, it, yeah. it would probably yeah. been a different match. Yeah, it was wonderful, wonderful. I, I mean, I don't normally tune in except Tyrone or somebody or Derry say is playing, but. Uh, uh, for that game, I just I was delighted that I left time for it and I saw the whole thing. Uh, but you let, let let me let me introduce. Uh, uh, um, I know uh, 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 I of I see uh, you mentioned it and I read yesterday. Uh, Jim Allister. No, I didn't hear that one this morning because I was away this morning. Uh, yeah. Jim Allister yeah. was having a go on uh, about the uh, elevation of terrorism and the oh, DGA. Oh. And yesterday, Jamie Bryson was on Twitter where uh, Glen Avon FC extended uh, good wishes to our ma on the All-Ireland final. And uh, Bryson said they'd be far better off stop trying to uh, curry favour with nationalists and get likes on Facebook if they would sort of support the uh, marchers at Drum Cree and the Vergahi, uh, at Garvahi Road instead of uh, this sort of stuff. And I thought, how petty-minded is that? 
Anyway, your turn. Well, well I, I, um, well, I think Jamie's very good at shooting himself in the foot. But I listened to, um, um, I listened to Jim Allister this morning with Nolan, and his main objection was that uh, the GAA uh, was uh, uh, an organisation that named its cup. I think he said after Thomas Michael Wee, one of the hunger strikers. And he described him as a terrorist who had yeah. murdered, I think he said, some of his constituents. Um, and uh, he said, you know, the, the, the GAA should be ashamed of itself until it would, they couldn't talk about reconciliation or inviting people in or being an open organization if they had that. And uh, do you know something, Pat? I, I sort of sympathize with him a bit. There's another part of me would reject Wait. it completely. I, and I'll tell you the reasons for that in a second. But I, I partly thought he had a point. Would you feel he had a point? Yeah, and I, I can understand, Jude. I, like, I'm putting this on the record for the umpteen time. I never supported the IRA's campaign of violence. But, but I, I've always added the writer, the caveat. I understood where it came from. And in, in the other thing as well, and the, the thing I've always said as well, one man's terrorist is another man's uh, freedom fighter. You did see in the French resistance, you know, those guys who uh, went out and uh, shot even, you know, German officers or even collaborators and all the rest, were they terrorists or were they freedom fighters? You know, and you th there are many, you, you see the thing in, in the North uh, during the trouble, a lot of those guys had no criminal records, whatever, not even a speeding fine. The, 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 would, would a criminal go out and, and uh, like uh, the guys on the hunger strike for a political cause? No, dude, I am not going to accept that. You know, the, uh, the, the troubles in the North, the situation in the North created a situation where people like that felt that they had to do something. Whether you agree with it or not, it's not uh, it's, uh, you know, that doesn't mean you're right. Well, clearly Jim doesn't uh, agree with them. But I was thinking beyond that. It, 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 Armagh brought the Sam Maguire Cup home. Yep. And Sam McQuire is an interesting guy uh, uh, guy because he was uh, worked in London in the civil service. He mm. uh, inducted Michael Collins into the IRB, Irish Republican Brotherhood, in 1909. Mm. And for many years, he was Collins's right-hand man. Yeah. Now, by most standards, I'm sure Jim's standards, uh, he would be a terrorist, Michael, Michael Collins. And by association, clearly, um, so would Sam, Sam McGuire. So you have to get the cup. And also, if you looked at uh, Casement Park, well, what's he? What's it going to be named? Uh, did you, you left out the most important part. Sam McGuire was a Protestant. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, I, I thought that was too easy, like shooting fish in a barrel. Uh, uh, but um, Casement Park, uh, and there's a whole lot of um, instances of uh, things being named after either Irish rebels or um, Irish people who were involved in resistance and fought in the War of Independence or the Black and Tan War, whatever you want to call it. Um, mm. It's just that uh, Jim, I think, has a point. But uh, do you, here, here's a question, Pat. Uh, we'll just leave it this because we're pr pressed for time today. If you had the choice, would you change the names of those cups and those clubs to something that would be not as so offensive to um unionists like jim and i would accept that their 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 uh, anger or whatever is is genuine what would you be yeah. in favor of changing it no jude i wouldn't and, I, I, and it's not been to be offensive and all the rest of it. but that's basically to say our history doesn't exist and it's and, you know and, and they you know that the native irish weren't allowed to resist. Like, Jude, see in years to come, if the Palestinians start naming thing after some of the Hamas guys or whatever, I am not going to complain about that, Jude. I'm, I don't agree with Hamas, what they've done either, far from it. But if I, 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 the Palestinians are an oppressed people who have had to put up with a hell of a lot. Jude, if they choose to do something, I am not going to, whatever. Like, uh, I think opposing British rule and your and your own country is totally legitimate. I don't agree with violence. I've never and I wouldn't kill anybody for, it. but I understand and I I sort of uh, you know, whatever the way people did so, dude. I don't what what basically uh, German people like him on is uh, we accept the British version that they were the good guys. They were the uh, you know the honest brokers. I'm saying bollocks to that, dude. Yeah. The whole. Yeah.
I think the problem is uh, that if you're going to condemn uh, Thomas Michael Wee Cup or whatever, uh, yeah. you're going to also have to come and condemn Michael Collins and the 1916 Rising and a whole range of other things. Yeah. People may say, oh, as my mother-in-law once said, uh, well, the, the old old IRA were nice. Um, yeah. Uh, Danny Marsden had a book, which I have my bookshelves, actually, The Good Old IRA, and he lists some of the things that the good old IRA, i.e. the IRA from the 1920s, yeah. did, uh, and compares them with some of the things that the IRA in modern times did. And yeah. the truth is, actually, those guys are far more ruthless back yeah. in the 20s. Well, so the you, got, they're you, they're can't, you can't have one without the other. You can't say, they're... I reject the IRA now, uh, but I really I embrace them in the past. Yeah, and that's it. And, and where do you stop? You know, I think it's this thing too about you know Irish uh, Irish language schools or someone. You know, there's total intolerance for anything anything that uh, belongs to the Catholic native nationalist Irish. It's oh, uh, you find an excuse to say it's offensive. Like, yeah. where do you stop? Well, what's the next thing is going to be offensive? Yeah, I think Jim actually was was trying to find a counterpoint, and this is definitely the case. Trying to present the GA as a kind of a counterpoint to the Orange Order. Which and is an anti-Catholic organization, whereas the GA yeah. is its arms open for for unionists or nationalists. Um, if you're black, Protestant white, Islam. gay, uh, Chinese, Russian, uh, whatever, uh, you can join. You're more than welcome to join. Uh, if you're Orange, Protestant, Catholic, dissenter, you can join the GA. Jude, if you're if you're in, nothing, uh, if you're oh, only Protestants can join the Orange Order. So yeah. you're it's it's comparing apples with oranges. It is exactly exactly. Um, okay, well, we'll move on from that now because we want to get a couple of, well, one more on at least. Uh, we're pressed for time. Mm. Edna O'Brien died yesterday. Did I ever tell you about the time I met Edna O'Brien? Uh, no, go ahead. <laughs> I think I did, actually. But uh, Maybe. Uh, uh, I was in, uh, it was about eight years ago. I didn't really meet her at all. She was walking in, Ch I was in Chelsea. Oh, yeah, you were telling me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was yeah. walking along the street. And I, I sort of, she was on her own. And I sort of tried, she was walking quite slowly. She was a fairly, fairly mature woman at that stage. I say she was in her uh, mid 80s or later, maybe. And um, I ended up walking beside her and I said, I just wanted to tell you what an honor it is to be walking on the same pavement in London here with a truly great Irish writer. Yeah. And she said, Oh, that's so nice. Thank you very yeah. much. And so on. <laughs> and I said, I don't trust her to that, but well, I leave that out. She uh, was still a beautiful woman then. I did. She was. Uh, uh, this I, is the I, thing. I worked. I worked in a hotel in Sligo, uh, a year and uh, about forty years ago. I was a summer job, and she was there. Now I saw her at a distance, and did she was stunningly beautiful. Mm. And she was now that forty years ago. She was in her fifties, probably. She was ninety three. Uh, do you think? Well, is, it, is it her her beauty? Um, did that play a part in her success as an as a writer? I don't think so, Jude. I, I think it might have fact that played a part on the uh, jealousy torture. You know, <laughs> here was a, 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 a there was a, a Jude. When you think back, the Country Girls trilogy, you know, uh, she she took on the Catholic Church. You know, we're, we're, like Jude, I keep saying the Catholic Church in the nineteen fifties and early sixties was like the Taliban in Afghanistan. You know, you couldn't mention sex and uh, what do you call it, and we were ruled by some of the most ridiculous. Uh, uh. Sort of stuff. Let's stick to Edna now in terms of I, as a writer. I, but, I, but she she's done it too. Now I remember reading the, the, the one of the floor, uh, country girls way back. Dude, it must yes, have been late, uh, late sixties, early seventies, and it was revolutionary as regards Ireland. Mm. I, I I she certainly broke new ground. Uh, yeah. It was based on her own experience um, because there's a Mister Gentleman in it who's an yeah. older man, and she in fact um, married, I think. A guy who was twenty years older than her. I can't know Gabler. Divorced, uh, uh, an English. I think it was English, but uh, um, um, I I worry that we'd get the two things caught up because I remember her in the late late show and Gay Byrne fawning over her, and she was yeah. beautiful. That was the first thing that struck you. The second yeah. thing was she was quite articulate. She could speak yeah. out and she could defend what she was doing. And the third thing I would say is I read the Country Girls and the Girl with Green Eyes. And I forget what the third one was, Girl and the Married Bliss, I think. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed them. But when I uh, look back, I wonder to what extent, um, to what extent was I saying it was great because it was rebellious? Yeah. You know, rather yeah. than it was great in its own right. Literature, yeah. The thing yeah. I, I felt uneasy about 
was Mr. Gentleman. I mean, here's this uh, in the, uh, fictional characters, but yeah. in this book, he was a, an Englishman, uh, obviously at least 10 or 15 years older than her. And he was essentially telling her what to do sexually. Um, yeah. I find that a bit, just a bit, um, made me feel uneasy. Now, maybe she meant to do it that way. I'm not sure. Yeah. Did, was that your experience? I, well, I got the impression, I presume that was Carlo Gabler, her husband, you know, yeah. uh, the guy she married. And there was a certain, I, but I think she was also trying, and there was, there's an uneasiness to it because Irish people were so unused and so unsophisticated sexually. Every yeah. thing, like I said, my Protestant friend who converted to Catholicism says, "Why is everything fun and the uh, uh, sin in the Catholic Church?" You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. And uh, I think, uh, and, and Jude, we were we had an attitude. Uh, I mean, it's like Bishop Daly. Uh, I got into a big discussion with him one day, and he says, "Yeah, Pat." He says, "The the thing is, he says we did tend to concentrate on the sins of the flesh to a large degree, uh, yes, where, yes. whereas other sins were sort of you can nearly murder someone if you were in the IRA, but Jesus, uh, don't, don't don't have sex." I, 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 I think that was, uh, you put your finger on there. I, I found her early books really, I couldn't get enough of them. Uh, now, for whatever reason, maybe I was, you know, sort of buying into the rebellious streak yeah. that they had. I think they yeah. were well written too. But yeah. I kept on uh, buying books by her later on. Like she wrote about yeah. 20 novels. And I found it, I was getting diminishing returns. Uh, yeah. In a way, she was moving away from her. This often happens to writers. Yeah. Like Sean O'Casey was the same thing. Once they moved their writing from the setting of Ireland yeah. uh, and into some other theme or country or whatever, it, it didn't seem to have the same kind of impact. Like, no, uh, it happens I, with yeah. other writers. Like but you did, uh, I think I was reading, uh, I was listening a wee bit on RTE this morning, and apparently she felt very hurt by the reaction to them. You know, there was book burnings and she was castigated from the altar and all that sort of stuff. But she must and, have expected look, that. Look, 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 what? She must have expected that. Yeah, well, tell you, I, but then look at look at where she was lionized in the last twenty years. You know, that <laughs> does not does not reflect the changing Ireland. Ah, it's exactly the point I was thinking, Pat. You know, at the time, the, there was half the country at least thought she was, uh, you know, sitting incarnate. Yeah. And now, uh, oh, geez, they can't forget enough of how wonderful she was. I think Irish people are awful at times. You know, in that respect, we like yeah. we, we begrudge people. At the time when they should be given a uh, a claim, and we uh, sort of lionize them when they're gone. Yeah. Um, anyway, she was a lovely woman, a good-looking woman, uh, very graceful uh, woman, very articulate, very, into uh, really very intelligent, and, uh, a great, and a good writer, very good writer. Uh, that's right. Hey, Jude, before we go, here here's a quick one, and I, I'm just right. from, I, because I think you know, might have she and Coleman. He's a, uh, I wrote this one down because, as usual, I, I'm useless with figures. Yeah. He's a yeah. presenter with News Talk. And he had a thing on last week, which I found interesting. He said he tried, rather than go off somewhere foreign, he's, he's married and he has two children. I think they're both teenagers. Yeah. And he tried yeah. a staycation. He said, here's the right, Dr. Collins here. He said, the, for uh, four bedrooms, three nights in a West of Ireland house he rented, it was 3,095 euros. <laughs> uh, for three nights at a Clare Hotel, for the four of them would have been 2,000 euros. And for two nights B&B, it would have been 1,220 euros. And he says, who in their right mind can afford that, that we're pricing ourselves out of the market? What say you? I, well, I, you certainly are pricing me out of the market for sure. I wouldn't pay that kind of money in a fit. And I suspect a lot of, well, maybe Americans might have the money for that kind of thing, but a lot of people, a lot of English people, for example, just wouldn't pay it. Um, yeah. But I, is that, I have a funny feeling, you see, if you if we transfer that to this uh, question of partition, there'd be people in the North would say, how oh, sure, for God's sake, we couldn't unite with uh, the South. The South costs you a mint to buy a cup of coffee or to stay yeah. overnight somewhere. They would see it as part of that uh, downside of any notion of unity. And the nationalists would say the same thing. How would you, could you I, I would, that I, would easily, I would easily say the same thing. Jude, we're on the wrong path. I think it's what, right, here, here's the other thing, Jude, let's get, there's all sorts of factors, but they, they uh, a lot of hotels, even ones around here, uh, have gone to house uh, Ukrainians and they're not available. And th that means that all down the West Coast, there's a lot of uh, accommodation no longer available. 
and therefore the the small number that are can you know the bog in their arm as deep mm. as they can put it uh, uh, and which they are doing but the long term for our tourism our tourism last oh, a couple of years back was worth due to making this up something like six billion per annum like i can see a lot of people saying the hell with this and by the way the other thing that i did notice this year i've never seen as many motorhomes on donegal roads I presume a lot of people are hiring these motorhomes because it's they can no longer afford to stay in hotels and uh, guest houses. Uh, uh, you know, uh, okay, it might be a thousand for a week for a, to hire a motorhome, or maybe a bit more. But you can uh, flog in all the booze and food that you want and, and do it, and uh, you're not paying for accommodation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I take a point exactly. These guys are gouging. There's no doubt about it. That's the word I was trying to remember. There's a scarcity of accommodation, but but. Even before there was any question, <coughs> excuse me, of Ukrainians or other uh, refugees coming to Ireland and being put up in these hotels, even long before that, there was a lot of uh, people writing and a lot of people complaining about the level of uh, charge that people were faced with if they got a cup of coffee, if they stayed somewhere mm -hmm. overnight. It just a half. Day. I remember, for example, I remember being down in Clonakilty. It was a half yeah. marathon on, and I mean, it's a beautiful part of the country. But Jesus, what did they charge us for the most meager of overnight stays? Uh, ridiculous. Yeah, I remember being in uh, Carrick on Shannon for a stag dude uh, as one of the get young guys getting married. Uh, anyway, bottom line of it all was um, myself and my brother-in-law went out in the next morning and we paid nine fifty for our Irish uh, traditional Irish breakfast. Nine pound fifty. This is about maybe ten years ago. The following couple of weeks, I was in Spain. And I went down to the local restaurant just down in the cafe at about 10 o'clock in the morning of the same breakfast for 2 dollars yeah. I remember thinking, geez, yeah, hey, Jude, here's a quick one. I know, I know you're in a rush today, but yeah. here, I can't let you go without this one. No, they were you watching the uh, opening of the, um, the Olympic yeah. Games? I But I saw the but that's there a lot of controversy since about the uh, uh, about the, it was supposed to be a parody of the Last Supper. Now the organizers saying it was not, but anyway, uh, a lot of conservative Catholics and Christians are getting very upset. They said it was a parody of the Last Supper. Uh -huh. There was a drag queen, a transgender person, and all the rest of it. Yeah. Do you agree with the fact that it? That, uh, there's an ultra conservative American bishop saying it was taking the piss out of Christianity and have added was they wouldn't have done it if it was any other religion. What ah, say you? I think I think they, they wouldn't have done it if it was a Muslim religion because there's somebody might have had a fat ball on them. But apart from that, I I watched the whole thing. That yeah. I had no problem with that at all. No. What I had a problem with was I was bored out of my skull. That's I was exactly bored you're, out of you're my just skull. The words my and life. I thought that idea of putting it on the Seine River just didn't work at uh, all. It didn't work, no. It you know, if it was uh, in the stadium, you could have had different lighting and all sorts of stuff. And the people were really dry. These poor devils with a rain pelting down on them. I just uh, thought, what a bad uh, Judy, idea that is. I, 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 like, I, by the way, I don't agree with taking the piss out of anybody's religion, but here's the point. There was no drag queen at the Last Supper. There was no, uh, what do you call it, uh, transgender person at the Last Supper. And as well as that, they're saying, uh, now whether this is, uh, you know, uh, when you're explaining, you're losing, but they're saying it was, uh, Dionysus, you know, the Greek god of wine, yeah, and about yeah. the founding of the Olympic Games. It was all about, remember back then, it was sort of like a, a, a large day of sport drinking and fornication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was. Yeah. it was all about having a good time. And right. they said that was what it was. And they said there was also about the tolerance, the absurdity of violence between human beings. Right. They should, I, if we're going down the road that uh, we can't even sort of have a, a parody, we're becoming like those very Muslims that we're condemning. I agree with you completely. I, I think, well, it's like Father Ted. There's some people took real exceptions to Father yeah, Ted. Yeah, or the life of Brian. Yeah, Aye, Or the life of Brian. I mean, if they want to do that, that's fine. I, some of them I find really funny. Like, I thought yeah. that the Father Ted was very funny. Certainly some of the episodes, uh, yeah. like the kicking of... Uh, bishop, the bishop's backside. I, on the backside. I was going to say the arse uh, there, but, well, I, mean, but yeah. uh, uh, I, I didn't see a problem with that. I think that's to miss the whole point of the, that uh, opening ceremony. It was yeah. just such a crashing bore. And that's exactly. I turned, I turned it off, dude. But in no, fairness, I did see the Last Supper thing. Though they're saying it is not the Last Supper. No, I got it, man. I did ah. think it was, that was the Last Supper. Does it matter? Does it matter, but, for God's sake? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Pat, I've got to go. Okay, I have things to, do, to, to go. I have to see a man about a dog. Okay. Uh, enjoy you. the dog. All right. <laughs>